Hi and welcome to Clark Auctions Jewelry and Silver preview video for the July 10th auction. We'll start here with this wonderful Tiffany & Company sterling tray. So what's really nice about this is the unusual form and also this kind of wheat sheaf design to the borders of the edges. Slight pedestal base, really quite nice. Came in on one of our Walk-in Wednesday appraisal days. Judaic and the sale, one of several lots. This is a Bezal Al School menorah or an oil lamp and it's really quite nice. It is signed here in the central frame or cartouche. Um, and this is estimated at four to 600. From a local large monastery, we have this continental silver tankard, really wonderful designs throughout. So this kind of figural tavern scene almost, or these standing figures. But I guess my favorite part of this is, I love the handle, but also if we take a look here, this is the split tail mermaid or the siren, and who knows what this is the logo for? Well, it's Starbucks, which is really quite nice that this is kind of this iconic figure now, which it, I'm sure it wasn't at the time that this was made. Um, and this is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. We have this continental German 800 silver serving tray, nice small size, and also these kind of calla lily handles are really beautiful, kind of reminiscent of a um, Renaissance style version of George Jensen's pieces. So this is the earlier version again, um, but this is quite nice, nice size. This is probably Persian, um, it has this kind of hunting scene with animals around the body of the vessel, slight dent to the bottom, and this is from a Norwalk, Connecticut estate. Manhattan estate, large Mexican silver bowl, really quite nice. Could easily see this center of a table with some fruit in it. It's really quite beautiful and in very good condition at six to nine hundred. From one of our Walk and Wednesday appraisal days, we have this silver and horn mounted um, vase. The handles are nice. I love the design. This is estimated at 300 to 500. We have this English silver commemorative goblet of the Queen's Jubilee. It is dated from 1977, three to 500. Interesting lot in this sale. We have this silver um, naval vessel. So all of these parts, it comes apart. So there's a lot of pieces, but there's all these cannons. We think this may be Chinese silver, but we're not 100% sure. The estimate is two to 3,000. There's quite a bit of weight to it. I believe I would double check the website, but it's around 87 troy ounces, but really quite nice and interesting piece in this sale. Came in late last week. So it was a late addition, but we really were glad to have it. Um, moving on to a Fabergé style box. So this is, um, spinach jade and it is mounted in gilt silver enamel work um, colored gem campuchons and diamonds but really quite nice beautiful form wish it was Fabergé but it's just Fabergé style but we still appreciate it and it's a beautiful example of what their work looks like um, we have some cool things in this sale kind of specimens this is amber so not only is this amber, I'm gonna put it up to the light, but I'm sure that it will not do it justice, but there is a bug inside of here. So it's one of the pieces of amber that has a bug stuck inside, which is cool. I'll appreciate it. Three to 500 came from a New Rochelle estate. So here we have from the same estate, two of three examples of sperm whale scrimshaw in this sale. So here we have a whale with a man in the water and it is signed. And then this is probably the star of all the scrimshaw. So this is a really nice example with this ship. Um, this one is also signed. I'm just gonna flip it over so you can see the underside also of this gentleman. Um, and then there's another lot that has multiple pieces in it. This is a nautical carving grouping. So this is, this is all antler or horn. Um, so this is, I believe this is a stag antler, but I mean the detail on this is phenomenal. We have this skull, which is always nice. Um, this is kind of a, a shrimp or krill or, or some, some kind of nautical creature. And then we have this, which is a man's face. And on the alternate side is a skull. So again, I like, I'm a fan of skulls. I think this is quite nice and a beautiful carving. Also from the same estate, we have these megalodon teeth or fossils, which is cool as anything. I mean, could you look how large this is? It's as big as my hand. And these are all lotted together. And there is a second lot of these megalodon teeth that's also in the sale. All right, jumping back to some silver, we have a Tiffany Co & Company chocolate pot or coffee pot 
from a large monestate. We have this 18th century Swedish uh, sugar caster. Nice early example of silver. Again, another Fabergé style enamel decorated goblet with colored gem cabochons and gilt silver. Really beautiful enamel work. Um, so this is in this sale. Top comes off really quite nice and in very good condition. This is English silver, a nice English silver Taza. I'm going to lift it up so you can see the detailing to the stem and the base. We have these kind of figural mounts here and just really beautiful scroll work to the base. Another selection from our Walk-In Wednesday Appraisal Day is this beautiful Taxco Mexican Sterling Tea Service in, style, in the style of one of the Danish silver makers. This is estimated at three to 5,000. Jumping ahead, we have this Southwest Sterling belt with these stamped designs to each circular pendant, and this is estimated at 300 to 500. We have this miscellaneous grouping from a large monostate, um, gilt silver and faceted colored gems. We have this amethyst necklace, and then this is a pair of signed 18 karat gold and colored gem cabochon earrings or ear clips. I don't know the maker, but we sold this, this maker before and I wasn't able to figure it out then either. It's kind of a script. Um, so it's unidentified, but the three pieces together are estimated at 400 to 600. We have these three 14 karat gold vintage brooches, a very nice vintage ladies 14 karat white gold watch. What's really nice about this is there's a split bracelet and also the dial here. I love that the, the numbers on the exterior of the dial, so it's on the surround and they're oversized. It's really just kind of a mid-century kind of feel to it. Manhattan Estate, we have this 18 karat gold, or 14 karat gold, I'm sorry, Italian bracelet and kind of a horse bit design. And so it's polished and textured finishes to the gold work. And I love that kind of difference in the texture. And this is estimated at 600 to 900. We have this Egyptian Revival 18 karat gold bracelet with enamel decorations. Love Egyptian anything. There's some hieroglyphics on the side. Really quite nice, again, at 600 to 900. From a Fairfield, Connecticut estate, we have this beautiful old European cut diamond, um, and it's in this more contemporary setting. It was designed by a specific artist. The information is included in our description, but really quite nice, and this is estimated at two to 3,000. We have this Millefiori 18 karat gold necklace, really just beautifully crafted. Again, I'm gonna just take this off for a minute so you can just see the fluidity to how these necklaces were created. It's really just so nice, and this is estimated at two to 3,000. Um, from the same Fairfield, Connecticut estate, we have a second diamond. So this is a round, brilliant cut diamond measuring approximately 1.56 carats. And it is H color and VS1 clarity. And it does come with the GIA diamond grading report that we obtained and it came in on June 15th. Jumping ahead, a 14 karat gold graduated link necklace. We have this international watch company, Open Face Pocket Watch, comes with a cute little leather pouch, which I always think is so sweet. Um, another graduated necklace, this is again 14 karat yellow gold. We have an Omega Seamaster watch face, so this is a men's watch dial face, um, quite nice at three to 500. We have a Timbetti gilt silver clasp and polished stone necklace in this kind of Asian inspired feel at three to 500. We have this platinum setting, so the center stone is missing, but it's flanked by tapered baguettes and it's really quite nice and this is estimated at 600 to 900. Jumping to this piece, we have a David Yerman sterling and pearl um, exceptionally long necklace. So just take a look here. So nice and it can be looped around and this is estimated at 300 to 500 with the original box. This grouping here, so just kind of an unusual grouping of jewelry that I, all pieces that I like, all statement pieces um, from a Manhattan estate. So we have a sterling enamel bracelet with horses and elephants. We have this Phoenix hinged bracelet. We have a large opal set in brass, it is signed. We have this Italian silver buckle form bracelet. And then my favorite piece in this grouping is this large cuff. So it is carved bone and it's inlaid with all of these different um, gold tone and silver tone balls, and it is signed Pablo to the interior. So it's just a nice statement bracelet. I think it would be great addition to anyone's wardrobe for this summer. Jumping ahead, we have this 14 karat white gold and diamond cocktail bracelet. 
I'm just going to lift this up so you can see that there's really a nice amount of diamonds to this bracelet. So the diamonds go all the way around the bracelet. And this is quite nice from White Plains Estate. Retro piece of jewelry in the sale. We have this 14 karat bicolor gold bracelet with colored gems and diamond accents with a double rope twist chain bracelet. Um, ahead of that, we have a 14 karat gold and diamond floral form brooch at six to 900. Okay, and here we have this grouping of four mid-century silver rings. So there's one by Laponia, there's one by Bjorn Wickstrom. I mean, this ring is cool as anything. I just would like to put this on for you because I want you to see how it fits. It's really quite nice. And I believe this one is called Eternal Forest, but it's cool as anything. Um, and those three are together at four to 600. Another Laponia ring in this sale is this one right here. It is 14 karat gold and it displays a single elongated tourmaline. And this again is at 400 to 600. Uh, moving on to a Mexican piece of jewelry, we have this articulated enamel decorated snake necklace and this is in the style of Margot de Taxco. So a nice snake here, the enamel decoration is in good condition and this is Mexican silver with enamel. Came in on one of our Walk and Wednesday appraisal days. Jumping over here, we're gonna start with this charm bracelet. So really unusual. I love this bracelet. It's 14 karat gold and it displays um, these seven kind of round capped different polished stones. So there's tiger's eye, there's coral, there's um, a sandstone, but all of them, each one is nice. I love the differences in color and I think it's a great summer piece. We're gonna jump forward to two important selections of Raymond Yard jewelry. So we have two suites. Um, both of these are from the same estate and by consigner provenance, they were purchased directly from Raymond Yard himself. Um, so we have this three piece suite in 14 karat gold with diamond accents at three to 5,000. And then we also have this three piece floral form suite, multi-tier with central cl clusters of rubies and the surrounds of diamonds. And both are by Raymond Yard, um, early 20th century American artist, best known for his rabbit butler. Um, really a great artist. And these are nice examples of his work. This suite is at four to 6,000. 14 karat gold toboga style necklace, um, continental 18 karat gold necklace, just nice statement pieces. Um, so we're gonna move on to some brooches in the sale. We are trying to bring the brooch back into fashion. So we have this 18 karat gold floral form necklace with diamond clusters. We have this 18 karat gold Italian um, coral cabochon enamel decorated and diamond brooch with a 14 karat gold cluster of pearl kind of tree form or even it could be a coral branch form brooch. Above here we have this continental 18 karat gold um, grape cluster motif brooch with diamond accents. It's really so sweet. I'm going to pick it up so you can just see the great movement to this piece so it would have great movement while being worn. Um, this is another Tembetti piece in the sale. And so it's 18 karat gold with coral, coral, carved jade, and a single diamond accent. But what's really nice is the textural work to the gold here. It's really beautifully done. This is 18 karat gold with enamel decoration and diamond accents. And again, I have to pick this up so you can see, I don't know at what point you would utilize this, but each of these flowers, they move. So there's no risk of really them bumping into each other and, and there being any damage. So that's nice. Um, this is a 18 karat gold enamel decorated and diamond brooch. Jumping to this suite here. So it's a three piece suite of 14 karat gold bamboo form jewelry. So we have this bypass style hinged bracelet and then a pair of door knocker earrings with the bamboo style again. Italian 18 karat bicolor gold with salmon coral cabochons, circular cabochons, and this is at 12 to 1500. We have a tanzanite and diamond ring with this triangular form tanzanite, which is nice. And just a reminder, the tanzanite mines are closed, so there are no more. This is a double band of diamond baguettes set in 14 karat white gold. Jumping forward, we have two vintage pieces. So we have a very sweet, this is a domesticated cat in 14 karat gold. And next door, we have an 18 karat gold jungle cat with enamel decoration and diamonds. Um, in front of that, we have a pair of 14 karat gold hoops and they're inlaid with green faceted colored gems. So that would be quite nice for all my friends with dark hair that would show through. Um, we have this 14 karat gold circular carved jade pendant, oversized, quite nice vintage. And we're gonna just jump back for a minute. 
One of my favorite lots in the sale is at three to 500, but it is beautiful mid-century, 14 karat gold and uh, malachite and diamonds. I'm just gonna put it on for you so you can see how nice it looks. Kind of this bypass style that I quite like. So really sweet. Um, so then we'll move back to an Art Deco piece in the sale. So we have this platinum bracelet and it's, the clasp has re been redone. So the clasp is 14 karat gold, but each of the, the remainder of the bracelet is platinum and there are alternating diamonds and faceted colored gems. And this is at two to 3,000. From the same state, we have this Japanese platinum and pearl necklace, really quite sweet at three to 500. We have these two pieces of jade, so we have a white carved jade pendant. And again, the middle moves, so this is rotating. And then we have this archer's ring. So those two together at three to 500. Pearl necklace, so double strand, um, black pearls and white pearls with a 14 karat gold clasp. From one of our Walk and Wednesday appraisal days, we have the standard 14 karat gold cameo. But next door is this really quite sweet white gold um, painted portrait of a beauty with diamonds surrounding a single pearl drop. In front of this is a very sweet 14 karat gold retro bicolor gold brooch floral decoration with a single faceted gem. We have a, an 18 karat gold mounted carved malachite um, cameo of a beauty. So really quite sweet, I, I'm a fan of Malachite. Next door, Moonstone. So this is again 14 karat retro with three Moonstones and a single diamond accent. Jumping forward to some coins in the sale. We have a, an Austrian Ducat, we have a, a US $5 coin, and then we have two US $20 double eagle coins. And one of them is from Stax and the other one was from a public auction. And there's some additional provenance provided on the website that's really quite interesting. Um, so if you are into coins, I would check those out because they're unusual examples in this sale. We're gonna jump ahead to these two pieces from a large Estate. So they are two lockets. Um, this is both Victorian, so both 19th century. This has got a, got a little bit of an influence of a Etruscan revival with the turquoise and the diamonds and the pearl surround. Um, flip it over so there is a locket on the back side. And then this one is just a circular locket with a seed pearl surround. Um, and then the portrait is dated on the back. So a family member dated it from 1889. So interesting, the two pieces together at four to 600. We have this 18 karat bicolor gold ring with a central cluster of colored gems and a diamond surround kind of influenced by Bucciolati. Three piece retro suite of moonstones and colored gems, the brooch and the pair of earrings from White Plains Estate. We have this four piece suite of metals set in 14 karat gold, nice from the sale from a Manhattan estate. This is Marina B. So this is Marina B, 18 karat gold signed band or ring with diamond accents. Um, I cleaned this one up myself and it absolutely sparkles now. It's beautiful. And um, this is at five to 700. We have an 18 karat gold Italian bypass form ring with two different colors of gyosha enamel work and a central cluster of diamond accents. This is an Ebel Beluga 14 karat gold ladies watch with diamond accents, two to 3000. From a Norwalk estate, we have this vintage 14 karat gold bypass form fish ring with colored gem eyes, or I believe they're turquoise actually, I apologize. And this is at four to 600. We have this from a local Larchmont estate. Judith Ripka, 18 karat gold pearls and diamond accents. What's interesting about this is that um, there are spots that separate, so you can change the length of this, but it's a beautiful toggle clasp. Again, from Manhattan, we have this. This is actually black seaweed that's been dried and twisted, and it is mounted in 22 karat gold and colored gems. And then it comes with this little, um, ephemera identifying who the artist is. We have this pair of cufflinks. So they are 14 karat gold, onyx, and diamonds. Next, we, from our Manhattan estate, we have this pair of Tiffany & Company gold knot form earrings. Two pairs of 14 karat gold earrings kind of have a pre-Columbian vibe to them. Um, and the consigners of this, their parents were world travelers. So it's likely that this was bought abroad somewhere in their travels. And I can see the influence there. We have this 
grouping of three gold brooches, all 14 karat gold, with colored gems. So that's quite nice at six to nine hundred. We have this 18 karat gold retro ring with colored gem accents. We have this pair of 14 karat gold and tiger's eye carved ear clips. This is a Bergdorf Goodman sterling chunky heavy bracelet. Um, really a great statement piece. Three to five hundred, I love it. Um, again, for all my friends with long dark hair, these would show their 18 karat gold, and I like them. I like that they're not perfectly oval earrings, so they've got a little bit of a movement to the form. Egyptian Revival grouping, this is 18 karat gold. Um, it has the Egyptian hallmarks, and it is in yellow gold, rose gold, and white gold with a central carved lapis scarab. This is, I believe, Museum of Modern Art as well as this. So these are kind of just fun pieces that accompany this one. And this grouping is at four to 600. Jumping forward, we have this high carat. It's probably 20 karat gold with a faceted gem. Really quite nice with this kind of triple band design. We have this 14 karat gold and diamond ring. Really, again, sweet, easy statement ring to throw on at six to 900. We have these two, um, diamond ring bands. So they're easy to put on. Again, in fashion at the moment are these kind of eternity bands. Next door we have Cartier. So they're Cartier ear clips, three to 500. Jumping ahead, so this ring is accompanied by an appraisal that identifies it as 14 karat gold and um, pink sapphires. But again, bypass style and it has this great variation in color. It's really quite sweet and it's very pretty on. Um, we're gonna jump to this men's watch. So this is a Hamilton Thinomatic. 10 karat gold estimated at four to 600. Uh, we have a ladies watch ahead. That's 14 karat gold cocktail watch with diamond accents. We have these three 10 karat and 14 karat X and O bracelets with diamond accents, six to 900. Jumping over here, we have a 14 karat gold tanzanite and diamond ring, again with an appraisal. Um, the appraisal value is $5,000. And again, reminder, tanzanite mines are closed now. We have a Mousse de Cartier gilt silver ladies watch. Next door, we have a princess cut diamond, slightly over a carat at three to 500. Um, Clarity is not the greatest, but it's a pretty ring. We have this 14 karat gold kind of modernist white gold ring with diamond accents. Next door we have a 14 karat gold ruby and diamond ring. Uh, we're gonna jump over here to our men's watch. So this is a Breitling B2 um, stainless steel chronograph watch and it comes with the hinge box and then all of the original paperwork is in the interior of this box. Estimated at two to 3,000. We have a stainless tag Hura watch. Um, I'm gonna jump over to this ring. So this is 18 karat gold with a black pearl, a white pearl, and single cut diamonds. So probably the nicest feature of this ring was that it was custom made. So the two hinge together or they can be worn separately. But this is a beautiful ring. It's really quite nice. Came from a nice estate, 25 to 3,500. I'm gonna jump up to this pearl necklace. So it's a double strand with a 14 karat gold clasp. Um, both of these diamonds are about a quarter of a carat each. So it's a nice piece in the sale at five to 700. And then I'm going to jump down to my favorite lot in the sale. So this is a pair of platinum earrings um, with emerald cut diamonds, straight baguettes, and pearl drops. They are just beyond beautiful. I'm going to pick them up and wiggle them for you so you can kind of see the interaction with the light. Diamonds are great quality. There's over eight carats here. Um, they're beautiful. Really absolutely stunning. They're estimated at six to nine thousand conservatively. And that is going to wrap it up for my selection of jewelry and silver for this July 10th auction at Clark Auction and we hope to see you there.